Welcome back to Tech Talks Podcast. And guess what, you guys? This is the last chapter in our book that we've been going through in Perfect Love by Joyce Meyer. This is chapter 20. It's called Spiritual Growth. Yep, yep, yep. Oh my goodness, you guys. It's kind of a bittersweet thing, but I'm glad that we're kind of at the end because that means we get to change it up and do something different. I'm not sure. I haven't decided what to do next. I think um, what we typically do here at Tech Talks is when we finish a book, we just kind of take a little break and um, just have some topic conversations that could edify and encourage our faith because that is our main intentions here is to is to um, help encourage and water our faith, you guys, and um, help connect with the Lord and his heart for you. And that is to be embraced and be loved by God and to have this reassuring that he's got your back. To have that reassuring that he loves you no matter what. To have that reassurance of he loves and approves of you even if you're taking a nap. (laughs) He loves you all the same. And that that is something I want to keep giving and reminding even me. I need it all the time. And I want to remind you. That um, our Lord loves and he just he just loves it so much when we talk about him and praise him and go to him and um, trust in him big time is the main thing. All right, so let's talk about it. Let's go to our highlighted moments, you guys, in our last chapter, Spiritual Growth. But before we do, let's say a prayer. Okay, so thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the beautiful um, gold nuggets that you've sprang up um, in these conversations and you've given to um, my my friends here at Tech Talks podcast. Lord, I thank you that you um, are always giving because your, your unfailing love is always wanting to give. And we're so grateful for you, Lord. We pray that we, we would continue to receive your goodness and not just keep it to ourselves, but to share it with others. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, she does talk about, are you drinking milk and eating meat? And even in the scripture, it talks about, um, Paul has talked about, um, I think in Hebrews here, that, you know, we all have a journey. We all have a beginning, you know, and a lot of us start off kind of like um, needing milk and, and then getting in that encouraging mode and knowing through and through that, God can be trusted because he loves us. His intentions for us are always good. He can turn anything that is not good into good. And nothing's impossible for God. Um, but I like how she kind of like explains the spiritual growth, like the eating meat part. So let's just go back into this and this shared moment, 227. I'll read some of my highlight moments on here. Um she was talking about, let me just come back up. She was talking about with the spiritual growth. Um, she mentioned about how Paul was trying to talk to these, these people he was ministering to and how they couldn't receive correction. And she says they could not receive correction through the word of God without feeling condemned. Um, and I'll just kind of go down here. It is vital that we know our position in Christ for if we truly know who we are, then when the word of God confronts what we do slash behavior, it doesn't condemn us. We can receive it as another level of God's love chastising us for our own good. When conviction from the Holy Spirit immediately turns into condemnation in our thinking, the process of change is halted and no spiritual growth takes place. We must be mature enough to know that God, that God's chastisement is a display of his love, um, of his being, of his being unwilling to let us alone in our sinful condition. There we go. Um, my interpretation is that, um, we should, we should have a backbone. We should, we should grow a big, a backbone in a way, um, And how can I put this? Like, we should actually want to be corrected. We shouldn't have this, oh, I gotta, I gotta make face. I gotta have a good face on. I gotta, um, you know, make it look good. I I don't like to look bad. I mean, of course, the human side of us don't think, we don't want that. We don't want to look bad or feel bad. 
But in a sense, I want to know, I want to know that if I'm offending, you know, God, because he's my friend, I want to know. Because I understand what that means in a way. Because it's like, if I offended my friend, my, my really good long childhood friend, and it's happened, unfortunately. There has been times where like, this, this one particular moment I'm talking about actually did happen. I was defriended and blocked from Facebook from a childhood friend. And I was devastated because I didn't know what I said or did. Honestly, I still to this day, I don't know. I don't know what I did to deserve that. You know, like, I don't know. But I would love to have known so that I can learn from that mistake and not do it again. Like, I would really like that opportunity to learn from it. And that's what I think she's trying to say here. Is that I want to know so that I don't offend and do that mistake again. Or at least learn that and work on it. You know, because I can't promise that I'm not going to stumble and fall. I, I can't promise that. But I will promise you that I will be more aware, that I'll be more intentional, and that I would try to be um, more watchful of what I say and do. And um, I think that's what she was saying and trying to pull from the scripture of what Paul was saying. Y'all need to um, grow up a little bit. And the only way you can truly mature and grow up is if you get in to the nitty gritty God's word and not just the grace, mercy, and love. That's all good. That's the milk side. That's the help developing of the trust and developing um, you in Christ. That's all good. Don't get me wrong. But then there's the, the hey, you know, you gotta, you gotta kind of um, work on some things, you know. Okay. So what do I have down here? Chapter 20. I have, oh yeah. Okay. There's a, there's a story that she inserts here. I'm not, I'm just going to give you some bullet points because I'm like looking at the time going, oh my gosh, I've already taken a lot of time. Um, she talks about this one story that, like I said, that this family went to Florida and they went to Florida. Fort Lauderdale uh, to Tampa and uh, they could see all these oranges, orange trees. I mean, this, these beautiful orange trees were, lo you know, loaded with fruit. And then they stopped um, along the way and they, they ordered some food and breakfast and they wanted some orange juice. And, and the, um, and in the story, the dad was like, I would like some orange juice. But then the waitress was like, I'm sorry, I can't deliver you orange juice because our machine is broken. Um, and the problem, and I'm just going to kind of read what she put here. The problem was they had become dependent on a machine to get it. And um, because they had all the, they had all the oranges around them. They had all the fruit with them, around them. But the problem was they had become dependent on the machine to get it. Christians are sometimes like that. They may be surrounded by Bibles in their homes, but if, some, if something should happen to the Sunday morning preaching service, they would have no nourishment for their souls. The problem is not a lack of spiritual food, but that many Christians haven't grown enough to know how to get it for themselves. And, um, and, then, and then to go on to read, the word of God is the food for our spirit, our spirit, our spirit needs to remain strong and renews our minds. Uh, Romans 12, 2, when we learn to think right, all other things begin to go right. Yeah, because in previous uh, chapter, we talked about a lot of our problems begin in our minds. So we need, we need God's word to renew our mind, to freshen us up, to get us in the right mindset, to get us in our, our right headgear type thing. Um, kind of like that pre game pep talk, you know, we, we need that and we, we need it all the time because there, there's always going to be something that will rise and you need a quick solution or you, um, you might find a, a, a something that could give you anxiety and you just you need to have that meat to nourish 
your soul and to to have that in you is so vital for your spiritual um, health and it says here on page 232 we have god's word readily available to us via church attendance radio television and the internet cds dvds our phone and other devices we don't have a famine of god's word but we do need more people who will exercise regularly by applying the word to their lives amen to that we need more people like that okay so yeah i mean i can have i can give you so much more in here but um but i think i'm gonna end with this and this is a sign she says a sign that you've kind of grown is this on page 235 i think we can simplify what spiritual maturity means by saying that it is loving people the way god does above all that we pursue we should aggressively pursue truly loving people to be spiritually mature means to be like god and he loves people and yeah we'll end right there okay thank you so much for participating week by week whether you read along with me or you just listened in i'm so grateful that you came by would you please do me the honors and favor to of course hit like and share and of course if you haven't already subscribe and hit the bell notification this helps um youtube know that that you would like to have more content available like this and it helps others to find this content content here so do me a favor share this link um, in your email text or or social media even and encourage others to um, tag along here with us um, yeah so that's what I have that's all I have for you today I thank you so much for um, for allowing me to serve you and to be a part of your um, daily routine or weekly routine actually and um, yes, be embraced by grace. I'll see you next time here at Tech Talks Podcast.